Yes, mate. So why is Gaz really, really hyped? That is because I am back with another Dr. Cucho Games review, this time for Pilots of Darcelon. Who loves games? Yes, mate. So, really excited for this game. So not only is it the long anticipated sequel to The Moons of Darcelon, but this game is just absolutely beautiful. It's kind of designed in that Commodore C64 style with that beautiful colour palette and the game just looks incredible. So I was really enjoying my time playing this game before its release on Thursday the 28th of May. So this game really, really is awesome and it just absolutely nails kind of a low, no gravity space physics. And oh my God, those blaster pistols, pew pew. Absolutely incredible. I love the way that the game actually plays and it's got a throwback to kind of much earlier space retro pixel style shooters although i have to say it reminds me a lot of the mega drive game subterranea or subterranea that i used to really really love although it is quite different to that but it's just what it first reminded me of initially this kind of has a throwback to games like gravatar lunar lander and solar jetman if anyone remembers those so the options for this game are really cool you've got inbuilt crt filters there's a number of different what options you can flick between and different ways that you can try to play the game. So you can play it with the scan lines, you can play it with the curved corners. It really does actually look pretty awesome on the screen as a CRT style game. So this is a game of physics and skill, and I do mean skill. You get this game wrong, you are going to die a lot. <laughs> but it is so cool and I actually I'm happy with it because I love the explosion graphics. I enjoy the challenge. It took me a while to fly around and it, it kind of, to me, it took me to that kind of feeling of you're kind of driving a large vehicle, towing a load behind you. You've got to think about how your movements are going to impact that motion and where you're going to need to move to in advance to take into account that you're trailing something heavy behind you. So in this game, you really are, you're out on a mission and your aim is to pick up that cargo and to pick it up as unharmed as possible. So you're gonna try to want to do it in a clean run because you are rewarded for the time it takes, for the level of damage that the cargo and your ship has taken and for how much time you have remaining on the clock as well. So the game's got quite a lot going on for it, and really you kind of have to get hands on with this to experience it. Whereas it's the thruster that you're feeling, you'll actually feel the resistance and needing to properly pump that fuel into the jet to get it moving. You really, really feel that in the thrusters. And as well with the way that everything else handles, the way that you have to deploy the tractor beam to either pick up fuel or to pick up the cargo, it really feels real. You really feel that you've got to be in precise control. And I just love the movement, the timing, everything about it feels so right. Then when it comes to combat, the, the shooting blasters like that sound amazing. But the way it plays just plays really, really well as well. And it's kind of got like a trade-off between attack and defense. So you do have a little protective bubble shield that you put around you, which you can't shoot while you've got the shield on. So you kind of have to play, like getting into position with the, with the gravity and the movement, and to throw out some blaster shots, but then also to put up your shield to protect, uh, or just in case the shot is gonna hit you. Um, and it's a real nice trade-off in combat, and I just really like the way that that's done. So as well as the blend of graphics and tones being really, really nice, I really do need to comment on the lighting because the game has got a lot of different use of colors for different levels, but then you'll get these really cool levels where you kind of have to go underground or into a cave and it will be darkness, you will have some lit up points, but you, you also need to then think about the movement of your ship because you'll only have the light from the front of the ship, so you will need to move around to actually look for any of those guns as well. You've got a mini map in the corner so you can kind of see where some of the gun turrets are located or where 
where you might want to go. You kind of have to really look very closely and navigate this all together. And I think the use of the dark sections in the game is very, very clever because it means you kind of have to really weight off your fuel balance because you are burning your fuel. If you run out of fuel, you're in trouble. So you kind of have to really expend using up that fuel to go and proactively hunt those guns to then be able to refuel to have enough fuel to go and get your cargo and to get it back out safely. You don't really want to have to put the cargo down to then refuel, sometimes you might have to, but anytime you drop it you're going to risk adding damage to that cargo and the whole aim to get the best score is to get yourself and the cargo as quickly as possible back to base. So even with, after a bit of practice on this game, I found it was actually quite difficult. You sometimes slightly lose control, you can then go to correct it. Sometimes I end up just completely spinning out to my doom and the doom of the base and everything. There's lots of explosions. But man, I really, really love this game. But Gaz got trolled by Dr. Kucho. What is this you say, Gaz got trolled? Well, you can check out this game when you check out the difficulty settings and you think, hmm, a retro style game, this might be quite difficult. Let's put it on an easy setting. Well, I recommend when you check out Pilots of Darcelon to check it out on difficulty setting one, which is titled Narrative. It is something worth checking out. So you do actually get trolled with a really quick little update on your progress of the game. Bada, 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 boom. Ching, job done, game complete, wasn't that easy? Well, you kind of got what you asked for, didn't you? <laughs> nice one, mate. I have to say, you had me on that. I did think you completely had stitched me up, sending me a code to the beta preview of your game before release. I thought, you proper set me up and there was no game content there at all, but it did suddenly then twig, Gaz, you've been trolled, mate. And I went down into the, uh, the options, put the difficulty setting back up, you've got a number of different ones to choose from, and then we're back on track for actually getting some proper gameplay. It releases today on Thursday the 28th of May, so do head on over to Steam, guys, and grab yourself a great, cracking little pixel art game. For anyone for throwback reasons that loves these retro kind of games or for any big Commodore C64 fans, this is a must have. For anyone that loves space style games and you want to just play something that's a little bit different, that's going to have a little bit of a challenge and just looks and sounds so good, just go and pick it up. Pick this game up today guys, you won't regret it. Be sure to add it to your wish list in Steam if it's something that you're not going to pick up right away because I know that's going to help the game and if you do get some gameplay on you want to do a review, drop it down in the review on Steam and just let Dr. Kucho and the world know how good this game is. Even let them know that Gaz recommended you and pointed you out to uh, go and pick this up because I'll appreciate that. And yeah guys, have a good rest of your day. Thanks for checking out the review. Until next time, yes mate, catch you later. Yes mate.